Hey, listeners, it's CJ. Uh, just a quick heads up. I recorded this episode at a different location. It was not in my home. Uh, and uh, by that, I think the audio quality on my side uh, suffered. So if I sound different or if I sound weird, it is not your speakers. Uh, it's not anything like that. It was me. Uh, don't worry. I'm already back home. So uh, I will be able to sound better for next week. So sorry in advance, but we have a fantastic show. I'm so excited for you to listen to it. So without further ado, Jimmy. Oh, wait, Jimmy's working from home. Jimmy, uh, if you can hear me on Zoom, can you start the thing? We'll start the thing now. That kind of nerd, let's start the show with comics, movies, and technology. Here we go, bringing you the segments that you're looking for, like Cape Talk screen to stream, tech perspective, and more. Cast this nerd degree and the blockbuster. Welcome to the club, because you're that. Welcome, everyone, to That Kind of Nerds Podcast, a weekly show that tells you what is going on in the nerdy world. I am CJ Mellon, joined by the one, the only, the incomparable Joshua Burns. What up? I, I, I prefer inimitable. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Not inedible, right, though. That's a, no, that's a completely inimitable. Different right. Gotcha. Uh, unfortunately, Brian Thornton uh, is not going to be joining us this week. He was attacked by seagulls down at the New Jersey shore and is being treated for all the pecs and bruises that he now has. Never get boardwalk fries. Just don't do it. <laughs> if you do, just just have an umbrella to beat away the seagulls. Yeah, prepare. Prepare for prepare the seagulls. Prepare for the seagulls. He was not prepared for the seagulls. <laughs> uh, uh, although we will miss Brian uh, this week, this gives us the unique opportunity to talk about things that normally Brian would poo-poo uh, and we would have to hear him grumble about. So yes, much grumbles. Grumble, we, grumble. <laughs> we get to uh, get some, uh, some topics that we, the you know, two of us, have wanted to talk about for a while. Uh, uh, get them going and get them out of the way. This way we can talk about them and uh, we don't have to hear the grumbling. So <laughs> if you want to hear the grumbling, uh, please enjoy this uh, imitation of uh, Brian grumbling, which you can just put in whatever you want to. Ready? <clears throat> oh, I don't care. <laughs> uh, here, my thoughts right here. This is how little I care. All right. And that was Brian Thornton not caring about a lot of the topics. I do want to start, though, this show with some follow up from, from two weeks ago where we discussed the Kickstarter to the Butter Hub. Oh, yes. Uh, as we discussed in the Nerd Degree, uh, Josh, not only did you purchase the uh, the Butter Hub, but they are now in your home. And I yes. believe back to some additional ones, ordered additional Butter Hubs? Uh, so, yeah, so I received the original Butter Hub, and, and Laura, Laura was like, this is the greatest thing ever. I have to give it away to people. Get more. But you can't. <laughs> The Kickstarter campaign is complete, so you have to go to Indiegogo to get it. So I got three additional Butter Hubs at $43 total. Whoa. Um, now, here's the thing. It, it showed up, and I was super excited, and I, I unboxed it. And uh, my first comment was, this, this, this thing weighs nothing at all. <laughs> it, <laughs> this is so incredibly light. It weighs nothing. Like, look, I mean, that was one of the... Every butter dish sure. you've ever held in your hand uh, is is disproportionately heavy based on its size. It, <laughs> like, okay. I don't know what they're Like a neutron putting. star level of. That's right. Like right, a yes. scoop of sun somehow. It's ridiculous heavy. This thing is so light. And that was the first thing. It, it comes with a little br- butter spreader, which there's a magnet on the top. It sits there nicely. It's it's wonderful. Um, there's There's feet, so it doesn't touch. Like the surface, there's right. ramps, so I, I can scrape the butter up against the ramp and and get a, a you know get the right amount of butter. It's fantastic. It's wonderful. Laura loves it. Are, are they? Are, are, is your family still heathenistically spreading butter all over the goddamn place? Uh, so, or Zoe, is the ramp doing its job? No, no. I mean the ramps. The ramp does the job. <laughs> um, Zoe did some sort of weird thing where she somehow got some butter on the outside of the thing. Right. And, and Laura was not thrilled about that, but it's in you know it's an easy cleanup and and, uh, and however even on the outside the the lid has feet, so that's not getting on anything, right? That's right. That's right. So even if there is butter on the on the and that's what Laura noticed with that that you know she touched the like the bottom side to the butter and there's butter on it. Sure. But there's feet. So when you set it down, butter doesn't get on your counter. It's wonderful. So we're, we're obviously not uh, being paid by the people at the Butter Hub, although if although you want we to, could be, we we would gladly accept. Yeah. Uh, Give uh, us so, money. So let me ask this: 
where does it have room for improvement? How do you make a 2.0 version of the Butter Hub? Um, you know, I would like some sort of, uh, um, like a notch, like a snap in place for the lid. I, like, you know, you slightly squeeze the sides and it comes apart kind of thing. Sure. Um, that, that, it doesn't have that. Like, it doesn't, it doesn't lock in place when you close it. So, you know, like when you open up a, a new Apple product, right? The lid yes. to box, it slides out. Like, oh, I, you just heard this because uh, I'm doing it right now with my, my magic mouse. But you, you open the lid and the bottom just slides out. And you're like, oh, yep. please don't break my expensive thing. Right. Is it kind of like that? Like it doesn't it doesn't detach right? No, or? no, no. I mean, like any other butter dish, the top just comes off. Right. Right. Sure. I would lo- I would like it to just click into place. Gotcha. Just just, just to. Just to secure a little. Yep. Just like that. Just click into place and then the slightest squeeze on the sides and the top comes off. That is the only improvement I could suggest. Otherwise, it's completely perfect. I was trying to, uh, two weeks ago, remember the subreddit that I, I, I looked at for like where you're supposed to use a product so easily, like everybody on the video for the Butter Hub. <laughs> Right, I'm just like <laughs> my my sister calls it the, the the whitest people ever having trouble with simple things. So, so yeah. I found it. It's it's where did the soda go? Right, or where did the soda go? And it's just examples of those those people doing things very awkwardly and weird. And it's the infomercials where people are holding Tupperware lids and they just fall all over. Really, the place. they're falling all over the place. Yeah. <sighs> so I, I just it was bothering me. Uh, so I, I'm glad to to hear that the Butter Hub not only has lived up to expectations. Uh, but obviously, just so good that it is now a stocking stuffer and or gift. Oh yeah, Laura already she she texted um she texted one of, one of her friends who's a uh, one of the listeners of the podcast is like, I got you a, an early birthday present. Except it's going to be late for your birthday. So so spoilers or non spoilers at this point? Um yeah, I, you know I don't I don't care if Amber knows it's coming. <laughs> I, it's, 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 that's none of my business. I don't not, I don't, I don't right. give a shit if I've ruined it. No. <laughs> Okay, well, there you go. A listener is, is getting the Butter Hub. All right, and again, if you are from the Butter Hub team, hey, how are you? Let's, let's talk. We'll review the Butter Hub. We'll give it an honest-to-God solid review, not, <laughs> not a nerd degree. We'll, we'll do the you, whole I will take video of us using it. <gasps> Josh will take video? Oh, God. I never yeah. thought I would see that. All right. No. Uh, now that we're done with the Butter Hub and doing some follow-up, let's talk about the world of TV and movies in a segment that we call Screen to Stream. And let's start with the biggest news of the week, which was the reason that I woke up today at 6.30 in the goddamn morning on a day off, which was to watch Hamilton yeah. on Disney+. Plus. Yeah. Oh, man. Okay, so this is when Brian is fast-forwarding through his own podcast right now as he's listening to this. Uh, guys, Hamilton's amazing. Hamilton's fantastic. Hamilton is great. Hamilton is now on Disney Plus for seven dollars. Like, please, for the love of God, take your take the time out of your day. It's two, it's two and a half hours, but I'm telling you, totally worth it. Uh, I th- I think Laura and the kids have watched it twice today. I I watched it one and a half times just because then kids and stuff got in the in the way and we we really couldn't finish it. Uh, it's so good. Well, and, and we both saw it. Uh, you know, in, in live in live productions. Yeah, you saw it in New York. I saw it in Chicago. Um, and look, we both had great seats. Yes. We both had amazing seats to see the show. However, the seats don't get in as close as the cameras do. Right. And or- so all the little all the little nonverbals, the facial expressions, the body language. More importantly, just some some angles from like behind the actors, right, and different vantage points that literally no one gets. Yes, you get those, and that's what's kind of incredible. So you could, so if you, if you want to peek behind the scenes a little bit, you kind of can, right? But but you also just kind of maybe see it from an actor's perspective or from a, a dancer's perspective in it, and that's just that just puts you in the middle of the show. It was unbelievable. I mean, it it was as far as I'm concerned, it was as good as being there. It was so good. And the original cast is amazing. That's the thing. Lynn Manuel Miranda has been doing a lot of interviews recently for this, right? To, to hype it up, knowing the fact that it, this was initially supposed to come out in theaters, right? And but because of COVID, we, we it's been put on Disney Plus. Saying the one thing that he wanted to do was give accessibility to the show. And unfortunately, if you were one of those people who said, "I got to see the original cast," now everybody can go see the original cast. And as opposed to Rent and Phantom of the Opera, and God forbid if we mention Cats. Uh, this is an honest to God stage production, 
of the show with the yep. original cast doing it. So this isn't going out into the world and doing that. This is right there in the Rogers Theater, you know, back in 2016. That's the other part. This was recorded years ago uh, and and now put up. So uh, it's it's so good. I, I, I really can't uh, just – I can't express to <laughs> enough how great this show is. Crying several times like a baby. Yep. Uh, it just tears running down my face. Uh, I did love the fact they put in a one minute intermission. Yeah, you know, just 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 in case. Yeah, you know, instead of instead of fifteen. Yeah, <laughs> just instead of just pause it, run in the bathroom if you have to, go go get yourself a soda or something. Uh, yeah, seriously, just just uh, an amazing amazing thing, and I'm so glad that it's now on on Disney Plus. And again, once they put this thing in the theaters, I'm going again. Oh yeah, uh, go yeah, see yeah, this on yeah. A big once once the world is safe and yep. I can go see this in IMAX, I will one hundred percent. Even if the world's jo- not a little, if it's a little unsafe, I still may risk it for Hamilton. Jonathan Groff as King George was unbelievable, unbelievably good. Uh, I, I was there were there were a few characters that that I knew I'd be blown away by. Obviously, uh, like Leslie Odom won a Tony for his. Oh yeah, I mean, just so um, good. So right, so you knew that was coming. Um, Lin Manuel Miranda is brilliant. I mean, he may not he doesn't have the best voice in the cast. Although um, uh, Angelica Schuyler, um, I forget her name, but yes, Renee she, Goldsberry. Yes, I mean, unbelievable, unbelievable performance. And and it's I've been listening to the soundtrack for I don't know however many years. Years. At this point. Um. This show was was far better than the soundtrack. Yes, because it's a different it's a different uh, recording, right? It, so yes, yes, that was a studio recording. You don't get all the little nuances of of the inflection and the language and and the the humor. Oh, just you different choices from that day. Yes, you don't get it all in in the recording. You have to watch the show. If you don't have Disney Plus, uh, you're probably a Verizon user. It's free. Just you get, get a trial. You get a seven day tr- or seven or fourteen day trial. Just do just, the trial for just Hamilton. Watch it. Watch it, and have your the, whole family. What they actually they eliminated. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, Lin Manuel Miranda literally literally gave two fucks he for this did. show. He gave he two literally fucks. Literally gave two fucks away for the show. That's right. Uh, That's my, right. My wife, my wife, and I had uh, just a bet going on as to what fuck would be kept in uh, on the show. Well, you knew it was Hurricane Mulligans had to go because it was very apparent. Uh, y- yes, and I wanted uh, I-, I wanted it to be, and so did my wife, uh, Southern Democratic motherfucking Republicans. But it wasn't, because I knew what it would be, which is, is that's what was my wife that you decided to fuck. And right. that's the one they kept in. And when it happened, we're like, no, we were like, I really wanted her other good fuck to come in, but all right, I'll take it, I'll take it, I'll take it, it's fine, it's fine. <laughs> um, just, just so good. And the other part, too, the, the thing that I didn't realize was that uh, Renee Goldsberry uh, was Quelfa's uh, was it Quelfest Falconer in Altered Carbon? Like, I forgot that that was her. I was like, oh my God, she's in Altered Carbon. Oh, these people have careers outside of Hamilton. Duh. Yes. <laughs> just yes, they do. <laughs> uh, but like, you watch Altered Carbon, and you're not just like, that boom. And I, she can probably sing really well and probably, you know, is part of a Tony winning ensemble. Oh, she was? Oh, God. Okay, all right. <laughs> so, um, anyway, enough blabbering about Hamilton. You need to watch it. You need to do it. Uh, even if you're not into musicals, even if you're not into plays this is you know hip-hop in there this isn't you know hody toity hey, i love somebody kind of crap so uh, i would i would definitely check it out and then it's fun to learn a little bit of a little bit of history about america well yeah because the history is on point for the most part yeah there's a couple things that are, sure. are adjusted and, and dramatized but overall the big broad strokes of the history is correct seeing seeing our founding fathers as flawed people who are just kind of petty at times is really interesting <laughs> Right, it's <laughs> just super interesting. Yeah, it's it's worth it's worth several watches. Everyone should watch it multiple times. Yep, uh, give Lin Manuel Miranda all your money, and then when In the Heights comes out, go see that too. Uh, so definitely uh, excited. I know you should go see it. And, and Brian, I can hear you grumbling a mile away. We we are now done. Uh, so in in the show notes, you know, for you know what, Brian, for you in the show notes, I had the Hamilton stuff marked. So you, you, I hope you hope you get to skip it. So let's get to some actual movie news, right? I thought this was a super interesting article that I saw the other day that Walmart is planning to turn 160 of its parking lots into drive-in movie theaters this August, which um, I thought was just kind of interesting because we've been talking about how right now with everything going on, the the drive-in is having a a bit of a resurgence. Uh, It's a little easier and, and safer to go see a movie this way. 
and now a large movie theater uh, establishment is going to be held by a retail establishment. I just, I, I didn't think about that before, but this is a great idea. Yeah, it, it's 160 stores, um, and it it seems like it's going to be two showings per location. So for a, a total of 320 showings, um, look, it's it's three percent ish of of their total uh, footprint. So it's not like it's not a ton of places, um, but probably coming to a Walmart near you, a drive-in theater, uh, is is kind of dope. We don't we don't really have. Um, it's the um, Tribeca Drive-In program, but we don't we don't know what movies they're going to run or, or you know, um, it says concessions will be delivered to your vehicle. So we're assuming it's going to be like an app based order sort of thing. But like, I think it's a, it's a really cool idea, um, especially when you consider like, I, I don't want to take my family to a movie theater. But I would, I, I you know, I, I would entertain a drive-in. Yeah, there there are movies I think I want my kids to see, uh, just like we just talked about, right, with Hamilton. I want to go see it on a big screen. There are movies that are out, have come out, that I think would be great to see again on a bigger screen that's not, you know, in the house, that isn't that, get, get a little bit of a movie theater experience. The, the local drive-in theater near me and, and, and near you has had a ebb and flow of opening, not opening. Uh, so, you know, Walmart's a pretty, pretty big place for it. They have a website right now, walmartdrivein.com that you can kind of sign up for updates, but it's basically going to be starting in early August and it's supposed to be going, it said until, uh, October. Uh, so, uh, a couple, couple months to, to spread this out. You're right. Absolutely. Right now. No idea as what the movies will be. If, if there's pricing, that's the other part. I don't know. Do you, do you pay for this? I mean, do you not pay for this? Are they just hoping to make money off the concessions? A lot of questions, but again, Walmart usually has a big parking lot, and after a certain time of night, it's kind of you know dead. Perfect idea to go ahead and, and right because every drive-in you've ever gone to, you have to drive through like the tickets, the ticket booth, right? Right. So uh, you know who who knows? Um, but they've got big parking lots there. All of their spaces are wider than your normal every you know <laughs> your normal shopping lot parking spaces. So. Look, it's probably a decent experience. If you've got one of these venues close to you, do it. Check out the website. I'm I'm all about it. I think it's really cool. This next one, I I I don't I don't know what to make of this. I just read the headline and got a little angry, and then uh, the more I read about this, the the angrier I get. I I don't know. An AI robot was officially cast in the lead role of a seventy million dollar sci fi film. How? Did the AI robot have to audition? So here's what happened. They taught this AI program acting. They taught it method acting. And Mm -hmm. because, you know, in in most methods of acting, Joshua, actors have to get their own life experiences, right? They have to bring their own emotions to that. And the AI's name, Erica, by the way, has no life experiences. So they had to create it all from scratch, and teach it language, and teach it acting, and teach it all this stuff to get to get the, 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 the to get the role. I, I don't know if it auditioned. Okay, so not only is this a weird premise to begin with, but I said, okay, what's the movie? What is the movie about? And let me let me tell you the name of the movie. The, the name of the movie is B. The letter. The letter B. Well, I mean, I don't know what to do with this. I got to tell you, some critics going to be like, I thought her performance was incredibly robotic. And we're all going to be like, <laughs> yep, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it was robotic for sure. So uh, Erica was uh, uh, supposed to initially debut in a different movie that was supposed to have been directed by uh, Tony Kay, who was the director of American History X. But they had a problem about scheduling. I don't know how... Yeah, and, and, and they don't have a director or a human co-star attached. Right. I, all right. What the fuck is this? We already Can talked say- about how a few months ago they were going to bring an AI uh, or, or a, a visual representation of a – oh, God, what was the actor? Uh, James Dean. Right, they were bringing James Dean back from the dead to act in a movie that. Yeah, but they were doing that like they did Tupac, right? Like a holographic thing. Well, the, no, they were doing it like they're going to project it over a, a right, 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 face. right. Same, same thing. Yeah. So same. take an actor and then make him James Dean. All right. Well, what was the last like successful 
sci-fi film under a hundred million. <sighs> See, here's why we need Brian. He might actually know that. He may, he, he, he I, like, uh, I'm not. I'm not sure. I recall. One. Yeah, under a hundred million. I, under a really, hundred million. Yeah, this, I really can't think of that. I mean, even 70, Blade Runner was more than that, right? This is a seventy million dollar sci-fi film. Um, I'm assuming the. Uh, I'm assuming Erica cost sixty. Eight point five million. <laughs> yeah, but you don't have to pay her hourly, right? <laughs> you can... Well, no, it's you know, it, CJ. The first pill costs four hundred <laughs> bajillion dollars to formulate, and then after Correct. that, you can charge a dollar a pill. Right. Yes. But, right. That that's kind of where I'm going with this. Like they it, it, they had to invest X dollars to develop Erica, and now they have to spend the rest of their pennies on the other stuff and everybody's like well we don't want to do that and they're like well this is what we're doing and then, oh, somebody else that's where i'm at i this is this is so weird. here here's the weirder part which already sounds like a bit of a science fiction plot twist to this whole thing like like i wonder if this is ex machina in disguise the two japanese scientists who helped create it you know create this program and, and give the backstory and the vision uh of her life one of them even uh <laughs> Went so far as to create an android version of his own daughter in the past. Is this Watchmen? Like, what? <laughs> right? This is literally when a robot gets sentient and starts killing people. Oh, this is very. This, this is, is when good. people start getting murdered. Not good. Right? This is how Skynet happens. This is literally how Skynet happens. Here's my other part if you're an actor and you're cast in B, and they're like, hey, we're really excited to you to meet Erica, your co-star. And they're like, okay, can't wait. Are we having a screen test? How do we do this chemistry test? And they're like, oh, no, no, no. Here's an iPad. You've met her. Here you go. <laughs> She's right there in front of you. Take her out. The only time a, a co-star can crash and it isn't, you know, on a bender. <laughs> no good. So anyway, AI, AI, they're coming for everybody. They're coming for, they're coming for all our gerbs. And uh, uh, apparently they're coming for actors as well. Again, this is stop, stop, because this is the plot of the movie, and and I don't want this. I don't want to see this movie. So no, I, I, I'm sorry. I, and for that reason, I'm out. <laughs> since uh, like I said, since Brian isn't here, this is where we get to, to do a lot of fun stuff and some topics we've been holding out on. And it's time for my favorite hobby, where I go around the internet, I find the weird, I find the obscure, and I ask this gentleman here for his tech perspective. Uh. One of the things that I get to reminisce about uh, is Blockbuster, right? Uh, a lot of stories recently in quarantine, I'm just digging through people's past, and everyone's nostalgic for the past, and they bring up Blockbuster. And one of the things that I have a very strong memory about for Blockbuster is Pokemon Snap. So in your Blockbuster, there, or my Blockbuster, I should say, there was a kiosk for Pokemon Snap where you can come and bring your memory card, plug it into a little hole on Pokemon Snap, and print out the stickers Stickers and the pictures of the Pokemon that you took pictures of in Pokemon Snap. Did you go to the one next to the beer distributor behind the Wendy's over there? Yes. In, okay. Yeah. Where the, where where the, a drive-in theater used, used to, be. to be. Right. More drive-in connections. Yes. That's right. Back where a drive-in theater used to be, and now then it was turned into a blockbuster, which is right. now a uh, a like a, a urgent care. So <laughs> roller coaster. <laughs> roller coaster. Okay. Um, it, you could. Did you? Are you familiar with Pokemon Snap at all? I mean, I've heard of it. So it was a, a Pokemon game N sixty four that was on rails, right? So you weren't in an open world thing. The, the, the camera was moving down the path, and your goal was to take different pictures of Pokemon, right? Got to got to snap them all in, in this case. Yeah, and then you can print. Them. And then you had fruit, and you had like a, a, a like a, a explosion ball that would like make. Yeah, people this is not something I played. I, I figured this would not be the Josh Burns. Uh, repertoire of, of games. But it was just announced via the official Pokemon Twitter uh, channel that Pokemon Snap is coming back for all new adventures and it's coming back for the Nintendo Switch. And uh, the last, like, Pokemon Snap was released in 1999. Like, it's been a while and uh, I am super excited for this. And uh, I'm kind of curious about you know, being able to you know, print out my pictures again and maybe make, get a couple of stickers. I can't, like, I can't believe this is going to be exclusive to the Switch and not app-based. Yeah, Does, like, doesn't this, it seem... Oh, this would be the perfect thing for an app. Right, with the AR as it is? Yes. So, so, 
side story for this, right? So, so why not, right? Why not make it an app? Yes. Right. So uh, we remember Super Mario Run, right? And yeah. something else that Nintendo did for the mobile games, right? They did Super Mario Run because at the time it was Wii U style. Switch was brand new. It wasn't the runaway smash success that it is now. And recently Nintendo has said that they are backing down from their mobile strategy because of how successful the Nintendo Switch is. In particular, how successful <laughs> Animal Crossing is. This is good. I can attest so to. we shouldn't proliferate. We're just we're just going to stick with this one good thing. We're not going <laughs> to worry about everything. Here's what they said. I mean, uh, not really, but th- like this, this is like if you read it between the lines of Nintendo was this shit, guys, we really fucked up with the, the Wii U, right? The Wii U, just not a success. It no, was it, dog shit. It was it a was pretty it. dog shit console. OK, yeah. OK. The Switch is going to be coming out. It's coming soon. But uh, right now, we just need people to remember that Nintendo makes good shit. Yeah. OK, so where do people play games right now? Because we're not going to fucking phones. not going to make one for the Xbox or the PlayStation on their phone. OK, OK. Everyone loves Mario. Everyone loves Mario. When they think Nintendo, they think Mario. Fuck it. Throw it on there. Do, do Temple Run, but, but make it Mario. And this way, people can at least remember we do know how to make good games while we get the Switch out. Okay, boss, you got it. Then they did it. People were like, um, I guess, I mean, Mario's on my phone. Yay. I mean, is that really Mario? So, I mean, like, I'll take it. Right. right. I'll take it. Take what I can get. I'll take yeah. what I can get. Then the Switch came out, and then this is already mobile, right? As we talked about rooftop millennial parties. Play Skyrim on the toilet. Do whatever you got to do. This thing's already portable. And now they're just like, hey, yeah, people fucking love this shit. All right? They're eating it up. People are playing Animal Crossing like you wouldn't believe. Fuck the mobile games, man. We already got them. It is insane. Animal Crossing, I, I don't understand it. Oh, dude, uh, it's so good. Okay. All right. I, I, don't, I don't get it. But okay. Um, and again, it's like there's money to be made. And they're like, man, we're just going to stick to the... To this bit this this has been a so the, the the tweet was put out on the the 17th june 17th right so again it's been out for for a little bit of time i've been sitting on this topic right uh 4.4 million views on on that tweet alone i, I like people want this and and I, and, and this remind like nintendo reminds me a little bit of like a, an apple thing of if you're going to play our stuff if you're going to interact with nintendo property you're doing it on a nintendo so unless Nintendo is going to bust out a phone or put a, a camera on a Switch, which, which they I very well it. could. Uh, really? You don't think they could maybe put a camera on the Switch? Like on the back? Yeah, I think it'd be bulky as hell. I think it would add a lot of heft to a Switch Lite. I mean, you could get a really shitty camera. No, wait, really wait, thin. No. Like the you couldn't get fi- a really shitty camera to do the job that you oh, want oh. done. <laughs> Can't do the AR processing on two megapixel camera. That's right. So All right, touché, again, touché, touché, it would it would it would add it would add too much bulk to 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 their current platform, which is fa- which is fantastic. It's very it's very good. I just again to to see them embark on a mobile strategy and and then, and then <laughs> you know literally jump off the train. <laughs> yep, uh, is just it's disappointing because this is this is tailor made for mobile. Right, but oh well. I mean, as as many of us, the episode that we talked about Pokemon Go, man, you dropped a hundred dollars on it on the show. So I can imagine did. if there was a Pokemon Snap thing, if you could order prints, I'm sure I would be the idiot going, you know what? I have like ten dollars. Let's just <laughs> let's just fucking do it. <laughs> let's Let, get it done. I took in this beautiful picture of a Lapras. Like, do you see this? I should oh. frame this somewhere. I should frame this. Let's get a print. <laughs> I'm excited for this. I like the like the like the like the roller coaster. You know, action photos, the one kid crying. <laughs> That's what you've got. That's what this it's is. exactly what it is. All right. Uh, this is I, I put this in tech perspective because I'm, I'm thoroughly confused by this. So Hasbro, right? Fine, fine maker of, of quality toys. Uh, has been making really weird things, but this is the weirdest listing that I've seen. It's the Marvel Legends Deadpool Interactive Electronic Head. Yep, it's a full scale, right, with 600 sound effects, head of Deadpool. It's just the head, and it costs $100. Shipping in September. I'm thoroughly confused, but also very intrigued. Nope, it is not Ryan Reynolds' voice, and for that reason, I am out. (laughs) That's a pretty tough deal breaker. If, look, if this was a disembodied head of Ryan Reynolds' voice, 
I would buy at least one. Right. But it's not. It's not Ryan Reynolds. Uh, and, and so I, I have no use for it. I don't care that it does have 600 sound effects and phrases. Uh, I don't care about its multiple sensors and motors for expressive movement. I don't care. And you lost me when you don't have the voice of Deadpool in Deadpool's disembodied head. I'm out. I'm out. Uh, I, what's the point? What <laughs> on earth? What are we even doing here? Right. What? You thought you could fool me? <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. I That's mean, not Deadpool. Ryan Reynolds? <laughs> <laughs> you had, you got, you... Whoever's under that mask is not Deadpool. <laughs> and therefore, you do not have a Deadpool disembodied head. This, uh, this argument is invalid, and your hat is pizza. Nope. Damn it. Listen, I, I was willing to overlook it, but now that you've really said, not that you've said it out loud, yep. right? Because I haven't talked to anybody about the, dis- the, the, the disembodied uh, di- head of Deadpool. Yep. Now that you've said that, for $100... You're right. I better be getting goddamn Ryan Reynolds. He's doing mint mobile commercials. Why can't he do this? If if it were Ryan Reynolds, I'd pay uh, two point five times that amount. I'd pay two hundred fifty <laughs> bucks for a disembodied Ryan Reynolds Deadpool head. That when I every time I walked by it cursed at me. I don't care. Two two fifty easy. But you put I don't know. Some jackhole in there. I don't know who he is, but I, I know, know who he's not. Some Johnny Tambourine. Yeah, walking down the street with his maracas. <laughs> he's not Deadpool. I don't. I. I have, he has no business wearing that mask. How about how about an upgrade? Can I pay like for? Is there an in-app purchase I can make to get Ryan Reynolds? <laughs> Even if it goes from six hundred sound effects to to two hundred, it would be well worth it. Hasbro. I, yeah, I don't I'm dis- think so. I'm disappointed. Great. So Josh. Yeah. Sports. Sports. Technology. Yes. Coming together. Synergy, sir. They've Trying been to, synergizing all morning. All goddamn morning. Once you synerg- well, now once you're synergizing with your sports, right? Uh, the NBA is uh, apparently going to start restarting some, some, of, uh, some games. And they're using the Aura Ring, an Aura Smart Ring, to catch COVID-19 symptoms. Mm. I didn't know that this ring existed, and I thought all rings were bogus. Give me your thoughts. Well, I think uh, probably this is one ring to rule them all. <laughs> um, but once we get beyond that, um, my my big issue is that, I mean, they're very clear. This ring will detect symptoms, um, but I think the big problem is the carriers are asymptomatic for two weeks, and would be spreading it and this ring since they're asymptomatic would not pick up on it so you know i mean it, it, it's detecting body temperature whatnot i'm sure heart rate things like that maybe maybe even maybe even your o2 stats they, they, I, they said uh it would track temperature respiratory and heart rate those are the three metrics right. which they but if i'm an asymptomatic carrier then the, then the ring is useless and I have no more use for this. Now. Here, here's the bigger thing for me. Uh, it, it is very serious uh, time for this, right? With a very serious disease. Let's not rely on a, on a piece of technology that's a gimmick or something that you could probably buy at a Best Buy yeah. to, to really kind of track that shit. Let's stick with medical professionals. Right. Like, yeah. I, I don't need a gadget or a gizmo to do that. Uh, I want a doctor. I want a person who uh, you know, went to school for many years to do it. Not some guy in Silicon Valley. And look, it, I miss baseball, but like not at the risk of of my of my favorite players' health, right, or yep. their family's health. So, like that kind of that kind of, and certainly we're not. I'm not taking my kids to a game. I mean, that's that's right out. Even 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 if it was allowed, no, nope. Let's get away from the COVID world. Let's talk about. I can, there's there are two more topics left, and one of them is something that again you're very passionate about, Josh. And that's music discovery. You have two websites uh, here in our show notes. One called Hip hopology, and then the other one that I can't pronounce. It's music. Um, you, like Yoki? Yeah, like just I think I think music is fine. It's okay. it's uh, Nod's world of music. So music. Here's what's cool about this. It when you click the link and, and listener, you should click the link. It'll say to teach Nod 
what you're like, please type in three bands you already know and like. So, yeah. So if I say Tool and I say Deftones and I say Brand New, what I get after I type that is singular recommendation. In this case, it's based on your choices. Nod predicts you might like the music of Thrice. So I can play it and sample it from Amazon Music and say, yes, I like that, or no, I don't. And I can move on to the next thing. I, I'm, a, I'm a huge proponent of allowing Apple Music to serve new music up to me based on what I've already told that I like, and it's been pretty spot on. I love finding new things. I love finding obscure things. I, frankly, it's nice to be ahead of the curve. Um, it, it's, it was nice to be listening to Billie Eilish three years ago and telling people you should listen to this. And now everybody's like, I'm the bad guy. And I'm like, yeah, that's, that's not even, that's not even, it's not even her best record. I played that for you fucking three years ago, guy. Right. It's, it's nice. It's nice to be ahead of the curve as far as that's concerned. And this, this lets you sort of be in the know of the stuff that you and your friends already like, Right. But giving you something new that you may not may not have heard of yet. All right, the next one that you have though is a is a it's another website, right? Uh, called uh, Hip Hopology, and I love they have the, the domain dot xyz. So awesome. So Hip Hopology dot xyz. Uh, what's going on with this one? All right, what I really liked about this was that you could select an artist. So just go to the home page, and I clicked on on, on most deaf. Um, what's really really cool about hip hopology is it breaks down how unique they are based on their vocabulary so unique words verses per album drug references oh my god so this top, is like cur- top curse words top curse words by album <laughs> vocabulary stats so the again uh, being a, a bit of a wordsmith, I really enjoy this. But like, well, just from the, the data nutner, this this reminds me of a trading card for hip hop artists. Yeah, a bit, a bit, right? right? So if you if you would go to some of the like some of the most popular artists right now, <laughs> this is awesome, actually. I mean, I don't know Snoop Dogg, right? He's pretty popular. Eminem's pretty popular. I mean, just pick anybody. Click on him, Nicki Minaj. She's incredibly popular. And if I viewed her profile, her vocabulary size is 13,397 words. She's below the average of 14,140. She's above the average of verses per album. She has a below average word density, a below average unique word density, shorter, smaller syllables, uh, 1.2 syllables per word. I love this because it breaks down how smart the lyrics are. And that's what matters. That's what matters to me is, is how smart the lyrics yeah, are. Yeah, I just looked up Lil Wayne. He's in Lil the 52 Wayne. percentile, right? He Well, except, yes, yes. He's, but. he's 52% unique words, but if you drill down further, right, he has a vocabulary size of 20,675 words, which is well above the average. Yeah. Right? He this has, is cool. It's very cool. Yeah, look at the Kendrick Lamar now. Like, yeah, all right. 14,779 for vocabulary side. Word density, 157. Uh, the average is about 158. So it's just about average on that one. Syllable views per word. This is cool, dude. It yeah. even recommends an album, too. So, hey, if, 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 you want to get, if you want to get in, here's a recommended album for you. Eminem has, Eminem has one of the largest vocabularies I've ever seen. Right. At, at, at 21,000 plus a larger word density, unique word density, average syllables per verse, average verses per album. He's above average in all these categories. So like, when you when you think to yourself like, ah, you know, if I if I'm looking for a more cerebral hip hop artist, where should I start? Right. This would be a good jump off. Yeah, I'm, Just I, I'm go looking to at this site. I'm looking at Childish Gambino right now. Right. Just, just because again, I think Donald Glover is incredibly fucking smart. Like, just he's a smart dude. And uh, you know, looking at his hip hop stats, it, it it's you know vocabulary size nine thousand four hundred and sixteen. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have thought that. Pretty repetitive, right? 
word density, again, 139 below average. But average syllables per word, he's above average. Like, this is interesting. Right. So, and and here's here's where I want to, like, unique word percentage. Being above average in unique word percentage does not make you uh, a smart hip hop artist, right? Like ASAP Rocky, who I think is dog shit, is above average in unique words. That's just words that people don't say, but has a vocabulary size of 9,000, which is, which is, listen, that's 50% below the average. So I would just say, explore this. Like if you are at all interested in hip hop, Chance the Rapper is incredibly popular right now. Yes. Um, has an above average unique word percentage, but well below average on vocabulary size, but above average on average syllables per word. So like, I, look, one of those things where obviously the more data this guy has to collect, the the, the better off, you know, sure. to be in, in interpreting the data. But like, if, if I'm looking for a cerebral hip hop artist, I'm probably not going to ASAP Rocky. Yeah, I, I, I think this is, again, the, the entryway to this, as you learn, because uh, I have been very slowly, uh, thanks to like carpooling with a, a friend of mine, getting into hip hop at, you know, at 31, uh, trying to find artists that speak to, that speak to me and also just kind of give me something to think about. And you know, kind of seeing a little bit about, all right, what does this person's vocabulary look like? You know, if I don't want to hear a completely you know, swear laid rap and I, I want to hear something else i can see okay this person has a low swear count i can just maybe focus on the lyric instead of just hearing you know some we'll just say fuck a lot right. uh but also there's some days are just like i need like the most f-bomb laden shit i can find right i'm yep. fucking pissed i need someone to be just as pissed as i am who am i going to today right <laughs> just being able to kind of sort through that very interesting man this is this is pretty cool the, the guy that um that I looked up first because he's um, he's a he's a brilliant lyricist. Not I'm not a huge fan of of his entire collection, but a- Aesop Rock, which is different than ASAP Rocky. It's not okay, Aesop Rock. Um, it's like they give you the longest word used, disproportionate, unique word percentage, sixty seven percent, and then you start to get into the vocab stats. Over 21,000 vocabulary size, huge word density, unique word density, high average verses per album, one and a half syllables per word, 270 syllables per verse, which is 30% above the average. And then I think I should probably listen to more of this guy's catalog. I would like to, 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 to know that we took uh, a genre of music, usually not associated with a bunch of nerddom, uh, and just nerded out about the numbers and the statistics of it. That's look, pretty interesting. And 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 look, Common is another one. Common oh, is widely common. Re- regarded as a poet. Yes. Um, huge vocabulary, incredibly talented artist. Like, t- this is one of those things where like this can settle arguments too. It, it could settle arguments, but by the numbers, who's a smarter lyricist? Here you go. I'm down for this. I'm gonna be digging. I'm gonna be digging through this. Oh, I I must have spent the when I stumbled upon this. I must have spent two hours just, <laughs> just searching. As soon as we're done, I, I I may watch Hamilton again, and then like you know, this is gonna be the the the, the other downtime. It's gonna flip. Really cool though, right? I do. I like this a lot. All right, the the final topic. Uh, listen, this doesn't necessarily fit our show right away, but I'm gonna trust you, Josh, that you you can you can tie this in for us. The bread omelet is the most genius way of making an egg sandwich. What in Sam hell did you put okay. in our show notes? If, if you are on TikTok, which I've gotten Brian to adopt and many of my other friends to adopt, um, you've seen a TikTok of someone making this breakfast sandwich where, where, whereby put your, your cracked and beaten eggs into a pan, you dip the bread in the eggs and then flip the bread over. You let the eggs cook. You flip the whole thing and cook the bread on the other side whilst adding your bacon or sausage and cheese and whatnot. Wow, this is actually really smart. And as the bread is cooking on the other side that has, you know, the bread that has been dipped in egg is now cooking on the other side, like a Monte Cristo sandwich. Then you fold it over, get everything nice and melty, 
and you take it out of the pan. And yeah, I, I've seen I've seen a hundred different TikTok videos of people doing this exact same thing in different ways. It's as long as they know what they're doing, it's fine. And I think for me, what I would uh, tell my wife to do, you know, don't turn the thing up too high and don't leave it too low. I mean, this is this is going to be about finding the temperature in your pan. Right. Yes. Right deal. Right. If, if you're like me and you're a giant nerd about cooking and you have one of those uh, temperature guns and you <laughs> – Do you really have, you have the infrared? Oh, I do. I oh, have okay. the infrared. That makes I, sense. Yeah, I, I, measure, I measure the temperature of my pan before anything goes in. Um, and in this case, you know, I would say probably somewhere uh, between 35 and 360 is, is probably your, your optimal temperature to do this, to try it out. I would make sure the bread wasn't like a, a brioche or something that's going to soak up too much of the egg. Um, just try it with like white bread or like Italian bread, whatever. Right, right, yeah. Like just, you know, this, be this, smart this, about this, it the first time. This is the thing of like, hey, I wanted to have a breakfast sandwich the other day, right? I, but yeah. I didn't have a bagel or anything. All I had was was bread. And anytime, anytime I make a sandwich like that, I get the crumbs of the bread in the egg, right? And it's just – it's not a good – breakfast sandwich experience i I much prefer a bagel or an english muffin over white bread this seems like hey do you like french toast yes i love french toast hey do you want to have like breakfast sandwich shit inside of that i would love that bam here you fucking go all right so let me um let me jazz it up just a little bit for you please because i am making this like tomorrow (laughs) yeah and and i think you should i and my my recommendation would be that before you Put the bread before you get the bread dipped in the eggs. Yes. Just 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 the lightest, just the lightest amount of butter on both sides of both pieces of bread. Right. And that's going to give you what at the end, the crispiness that you're looking for. Yeah. Also, almost like a grilled cheese kind of thing. Fuck's sake. Don't use American cheese. I mean, I don't care. Shredded cheddar. I'm not going to say go out and buy a block of Gruyere and sh- look, that's what I would do. Don't yeah. do, you don't have yeah. to do that. Although but you like, should. Don't, not American cheese. And, and definitely not like, a Kraft singles. Oh, Jesus look, Christ. Get out of here. With I'm that. totally cool with, with people, you know, I, I'm not, I'm not a ham, uh, breakfast sandwich kind of guy, but ham would be super simple in this case. And it would, it would warm up quickly enough, but like you just, you put the eggs in there. And as soon as the eggs go in, you dip one side of the bread, flip it over, and don't fucking touch it. Right. Just let it cook. Let it cook. Yes. And when the eggs start to come come apart from the pan. You're good. You flip the whole thing. That was the part that was cool. Was they, they were both, you know, right on top of each other. Not on top of each other. Right, right. You know, what's the word I'm looking for? Whatever. Next to. Next to. <laughs> And then you just flip the whole fucking thing over. It was the whole it's a two you, flip process. You flip the whole thing over, you put your protein and your and your cheese in the middle. You you know, salt and pepper, a little hot sauce if you're fancy. I looked at this and said, What in the like why? Why is this in my show notes? And now I'm going, where has this been all my life? And thank you for giving me the best way to make a, this is amazing. This is, is this is genius. I can I am Josh Burns. You brought us things like the Butter Hub before, which again I'm not a big fan. <laughs> of. We we've seen the Foldy Mate, we've seen the Fidget Cube, but this this is the thing I'm going to use the most in my life. So as I am going through hip hopology, I will be eating a bread omelet breakfast sandwich. Uh, this is the super. It's not only super easy, right? But like you do this, you flip the thing, you cut it in half, throw it in some foil, and and take it from your kitchen. To your work at home space. No mess. When you're done, you throw the foil in your trash can that's right next to your desk. You're good to go. I love this. <laughs> I'm so happy. I'm glad. I'm glad. Again, I'm glad I this has been sitting, though, in the show notes for like a month and a half because I no, know, I know. We I, talked I, to Brian I, I, I about put it this. In there. We I would put be it in there a while ago. Mess and size and us. <sighs> News you can use. I want to hear, listener, how many of you have now tried the bread omelet? If you've made it this far into the episode, just come on. What do you got to lose? You've already done this work. Make it happen. All right. I want to hear about it. And you know what? If you, have, if you, if you do have yourself a butter hub, you use that to spread your butter on, on, the, on the bread when you make the, the bread omelet. Just get your life together. Get a pro in the kitchen. Just don't use American cheese. Please find a better alternative. American, American cheese 
isn't even cheese. That's why it's, it's American. It's processed dairy product. Stop, stop, stop shattering my, my love of American cheese because I still need to make grilled cheeses. Even cheese. Oh, don't, don't, I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to. I'm not here for this. I'm not here. Listen, you've already opened my eyes to one thing. Let's let's let me let's let me leave with with my eyes open on this one. Okay, and and all right, live in ignorance for my grilled cheese sandwiches. Fair enough. Anything else you have to add? No, I'm good. All right, listener, it's been a, a wonderful <laughs> conversation today with you, Josh. Cannot wait to come back in two weeks. Well, Brian will be back. Uh, so we can go ahead and talk about what else is going on in the nerdy world. If you have a topic, a subject, or anything you want to say, you can always find us on social media or text us at 484-373-4119. Look forward to seeing you next week. Stay safe out there. Well, welcome to the club because you are back on a nerd. 